I could you please watch the video to the end and write a comment what you think about it because this is an amazing clip and I would be really interested in what you uh, think about it. Thanks. Now that you have been, uh, at least according to this court, exonerated or, or justified, what, what happens to you and what happens to what they've been doing <laughs> and how uh, how much of the brakes do they hit on this like how what changes does anything change in the government's sweeping surveillance it's it's a great question i mean you would think uh when <laughs> You get a court, uh, not even a, a first level court, but an appeals court that looks at these issues. You know, they're talking about serious stuff. They're talking about counterterrorism investigations. By the way, in the same thing, uh, in the same decision, they said the government has been arguing, you know, for 20 years now, these programs were saving lives. They were stopping terrorist attacks. They said, uh, you know, first they said mass surveillance had stopped 54 terrorist attacks in the United States. Then they dropped it to seven, and then they dropped it to one. And the one terrorist attack, uh, or uh, terrorist conspiracy, whatever, that they said it did stop was this case that was just decided. And the court found, and this is important, after looking at the government's classified evidence, so this is not just the court deciding on their own. This is the government going, look, here's all the evidence that we have the top secret stuff, the stuff that nobody can see, please don't, you know, say our program is ineffective or whatever. The court looked at it and they went, holy crap. It did the, this invasion of hundreds of millions of Americans' privacy uh, happening over the span of decades did not make a difference in this case. They said even if, uh, or even in the absence of this program, if it hadn't existed, if government had never done it, uh, they still would have busted this ring because they were already closing in on them. The FBI already had all the evidence they needed to get a warrant to get the records through traditional means. Uh, and the fact that the government had been saying, Congress had been saying for years and years and years that this program was necessary, uh, the, gov the court says that was misleading, which is legalese for saying the government's effing liars on this. Uh, so that raises the question of, okay, like as you said, well, what now? How does this change everything? Well, it does mean the government has to stop doing this particular kind of program uh, directly, but that program had already shut down. Um, and the government has a, a really great team of lawyers uh, for every agency, right? The DOJ has got lawyers, the White House has lawyers, the FBI has lawyers, the NSA has lawyers, the CIA has lawyers. Uh, and the only thing these guys are paid to do all day is to look at basically these legal opinions from the court that says all the ways the government broke the law and go, huh, is there any way we can just rejigger this program slightly uh, so that we can dodge around that court ruling to go, all right, you know, uh, the abuses are still happening, but they're happening in a less abusive way. And, and then it's business as usual. Uh, so this is always the process. Um, with the courts uh, ruling against the government. This is not an exceptional uh, thing in the case of, you know, it's NSA and CIA. What happens is when the government breaks the law, uh, as the court has ruled them to do last week, there is no punishment, right? There is no criminal liability uh, for all the bastards at the head of the FBI, the head of the NSA, um, who were violating Americans' rights for decades. Those guys don't go to prison. They don't lose their jobs. They don't even see the inside, you know, smell the inside of a courtroom uh, where they're the ones wearing handcuffs. And because of that, it creates a culture of unaccountability, of impunity, right? Which means with each generation of government officials, they study this. They study the cases against them. They study where they won. They study where they lost. Uh, and what they do is they try to create exactly what just happened, uh, which is a system where they can break the law for 10 years, you know, uh, 2001 uh, to 2013, basically, and no one even knows that it's happening. Classification protects that, right? Then eventually it gets exposed. There's a leak or somebody blows the whistle on it, right? Uh, it becomes a scandal. The government, you know, uh, they'll disown this program. They'll change the law there. But somebody like the ACLU, 
uh, will sue the government. And so the courts will finally uh, be forced to look at these things. But the wheels of justice turn slow, right? The government will try to put the brakes on it. Um, the uh, plaintiffs, uh, the civil society organizations that are suing, will have to gather evidence. It's really difficult to do because the government's not providing anything. It's all classified. Uh, and then basically it takes another five years, another 10 years for the court to get to their verdict. And then we have it. But then nobody goes to jail, right? Nobody actually faces serious consequences who is responsible for the wrongdoing. And so the cycle continues. But having said that, like it might feel disempowering. Might, people might go, oh, we can't win. But this is in the context of a system where we lack accountability, where the government does have a culture of impunity. This is what winning looks like, because things do get better. The problem is they get better by decades. They get better by half centuries and centuries. If you look at the United States, you know, 200 years ago, 100 years ago, things were objectively worse on basically every measure. The fact that we have to crawl to the future uh, is a sad thing when we know it could be fixed very quickly by establishing some kind of criminal liability for people like James Clapper, the former director of national intelligence, who lied under oath to Congress and the American people, saying exactly this program didn't exist. The NSA wasn't collecting any information on millions or hundreds of millions of Americans, when in fact they were doing that every day. Uh, Obama did not fire him, right? Obama did not charge him. Obama let him serve out the end of his days and then retire happily. But it's not an Obama problem. Right. Uh, we see the same kinds of abuses happening under the Trump administration. We saw the same kind of abuses happening under the Bush administration. And the only way this changes um, materially is if our government changes structurally. Right. And, and that's kind of the issue that I think everybody in the country sees when you look at the economy, when you look at all the struggle, when you look at all the class conflict and the divide and the political partisanship that's happening today. Uh, the problem isn't right, uh, like about this law or this court ruling or this agency. It's about inequality of opportunity, of access, uh, even of privilege, right? I know people don't like talking about that. Uh, it's uncomfortable. People are like, oh my God, you know, are you uh, like whatever? But the reality is, we have a few people in the country, you know, the Jeff Bezos, the Bill Gates, that own everything, like 10 people owning half the country. Uh, and half the country owning nothing at all. Uh, and this uh, applies to influence, right? Uh, when you have that kind of disproportionality uh, of resources, you have that kind of disproportionality of influence. Your vote means less. Your ability to change the law means less. Your access to the courts means less. Uh, and that's how we end up in the situation where we are today. It's very disheartening. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't it's, have to be, because the important thing is we can change it.